Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. There's a lot of central banks around the world making gold purchases. What kind of stunning impact will it have on the gold market? We'll find out here from this article sent to me from Donald in New Mexico uh, by Steve St. Angelo, which I've heard his name among one of the analysts, but I really don't pay attention to one particular or a couple different analysts and really read a whole bunch of their stuff. But let's take a look at this and, and pick it apart and see what he's talking about here. The switch from central bank gold sales to purchases had a big impact on the gold market. Uh, precious metal investors fail to realize that central banks sold a staggering amount of gold into the market up until 2009. It's also quite interesting that central banks became net purchasers after the 2018 market meltdown. There's been a lot of speculation as to why the central banks decided to liquidate a portion of their gold holdings. But what we do know is that an amount equaled less than half of the United States supposed gold reserves was sold into the market from 2002 into 2009. Furthermore, official gold sales took place right at the very same time the gold market took off. From 2002 to 2009, nearly 1,800 metric tons of gold went into gold ETFs, which accounted for 52% of central bank gold sales during that period. According to data from the World Gold Council, in just eight years, central banks sold 3,425 metric tons of gold, or a massive 110 million ounces of gold into the market. To get an idea just how much gold this was, from 2002 to 2008, the majority of the sales, central banks supplied roughly 20% of the global mine supply. That is a heck of a lot of gold for sure. To put it another way, 110 million ounces is more than the total current 93 million ounces of global transparent gold holdings, including depositories, mutual funds, and ETFs. Moreover, central banks sold nearly four times the gold that is supposedly in SPDRs, uh, gold ETF, 28 million ounces. So it seems that a lot of the public's uh, gold went into private hands. Regardless, the chart below shows the central bank net gold purchases from 2002 to 2017. And boy, is it really stunning to see how much gold was sold. And uh, during these times, it was much lower than it was now. Uh, look at that. 2005 had the, the highest gold sales. Net change of central bank impact on gold market, 228 million ounces. And now you see them buying it all up. Small Gold's channel uh, talks about uh, in great detail the different nations, China and India, Russia, buying up all this gold. Very interesting. As we can see, central bank sales of 110 million ounces from 2002 to 2009 switched to purchases of 118 million ounces in two, from 2010 to 2017. Thus, the net change on the gold market over the 16-year period was a stunning 228 million ounces. Got to remember that the market enjoyed an extra supply of 110 million ounces from 2002 to 2009. And that may have been why the price was kind of suppressed because there was a lot more gold uh, flooding the market. But this became the demand of 118 million ounces during the next eight-year period. Also, an estimated central bank gold sales were 530 or $53 billion versus purchases of $163 billion. So here's official gold net purchases there. And we can see where the prices uh, were in relation to these sales. Selling less and the price going up and up. And uh, still a lot of buying going on here as it, go, as, it, as it moved along there. Very interesting indeed. So that's if the central banks waited for and sold their gold during the second period, they would have made $143 billion rather than the $53 billion from 2002 to 2009. That $143 billion figure is based on selling 110 million ounces at an average gold price of $1,300. 
Now, of the stated 374 million tons of gold purchased by central banks in 2017, small gold wrote that Russia accounted for 220 million metric tons, or 60% of the total last year. Also, if you check out Small Gold's article linked above, Russia added 804 metric tons of gold to its reserve from 2014 to 2017, which means Russia purchased 40% of all central bank gold during the, that four-year period. While the West continues to de demonize Russia, they are in as much better shape economically if we focus on energy, debt, and gold holdings. According to Sputnik News, Russia's debt of GDP uh, jet debt to GDP declined 33%. However, compare Russia's 33% debt to GDP to Japan 253%, U.S. 110%, France 97%, U.K. 85%, European Union 81%, Germany 64%. Although I would just interject there that Russia has got a lot more problems than just that. Um, there's a lot, a lot of other metrics we have to look at uh, when looking at the uh, Russian economy. Furthermore, even though the United States is producing a lot more oil, we still have net petroleum imports of 3 to 4 million barrels per day, whereas Russia is exporting over 5 million barrels per day. And I think some of that's changing uh, quickly on the domestic front here. Lastly, if we consider that the United States holds 8... Uh, 8,133 metric tons of gold in reserve backed by $21 trillion in debt versus uh, 1,838 metric tons of official Russian gold reserves supporting $449 million in debt, billion dollars in debt. Russia comes out as a clear winner. Well, I have not heard that they've got 1,838 metric tons of gold. I've of the understanding that the United States is by far and above holds way more gold than any other nation in the world. Um, so I'm not sure I trust those numbers. I have to look that up. But I've, I've done videos on that before, and we hold a lot more gold than any other nation in the world, for sure. Although the $21, the $21 trillion in debt is alarming, for sure. And uh, But I don't know what the debt of Russia has um, compared to others, uh, but you know, but then again, they've got a different, a deflated currency for sure. The ruble is in trouble. Uh, for each ounce of gold that is supposedly held in the U.S. official reserves, there is over eighty thousand dollars of debt. Uh, now compare that to seventy six hundred dollars worth of debt for each ounce of Russian official gold reserves. Um, if those numbers are true, I am questioning those numbers. It'll be quite interesting to see how the situation unfolds in the global economic and financial systems when the next major market correction takes place. And the overall premise of this article, I do agree with. The reason why, and this goes back to why Donald in New Mexico sent this article to me, why uh, uh, these central banks are holding gold. If it's good enough for them to hold, it's certainly good enough for us to hold gold. And uh, for me, I've been buying in some form or another during all of this time, although not as much back then uh, in the early 2000s as much as I should. But now I know a further understanding why the price was suppressed so much because all these central banks were selling uh, gold. Now they're accumulating it. And uh, I doubt very seriously we're going to see central banks sell anytime soon because we all know that the way things are going with these central uh, governments, all of them are spending it, spending out like it's going out of style. Japan, others, and uh, and there's a lot of a uh, lot of things that need to be done differently in many governments, including our own, by the way. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot of room for improvement in our own government, uh, as this article stated. But I don't think we're nearly as bad shape as some other nations around the world, including Russia, by the way. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again to Donald in New Mexico, and uh, thanks to Small Gold for all of his work and in, uh, in, in outlining and detailing a lot of these things as he was referenced in this article as a member of our community here. So I encourage you to subscribe uh, to a Small Gold when you get a chance. And thanks again to Donald in New Mexico for providing this. And for all of you guys that have sent me articles and things, if I've missed some of them, I apologize. 
Uh, if you really want to see me do a video on something, send me a reminder. It's best to send me an email on salivatemetal at gmail.com. I'll have a better chance of seeing it there than referenced in the comments because a lot of times with a comment review, I can't quite get to it or if I'm doing a live comment review or something. Uh, so post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.